Hi, I'm Fristellian, and welcome to the Destruction Warlock Guide for Legion 7.0. The specs should be familiar from Warlords, but there have been some changes, so in this video I'll show you the fundamental mechanics to get you in the game as fast as possible. So, let's get started. Resources have been normalised across Warlock specs, and all are using Soul Shards and Mana. Embers have been removed. Shards are simply combo points that stack to 5, and the global cooldown has been set to 1.5 seconds, reduced by haste. For core abilities, Immolate deals damage on cast and over time. All parts have a chance to generate a shard, and this chance is doubled on critical hits. It is now your primary source of shard generation. Conflagrate is instant cast, generates a shard, and has two charges. The cooldown is reduced by haste. Chaos Bolt costs two shards and always crits, with crit rating increasing the damage. It is your main shard spender. Incinerate has been demoted to a filler spell, and all of these spells cost mana, which life tap returns at the cost of health. Warlocks are a pet class, and the different types of demon have been divided up between the specs. With destruction, it's the imp that deals more damage against immolated targets. For any group content, this will be your standard pet, and its command demon ability is a small heal. If you are soloing out in the world, you are likely using the Voidwalker as a pocket tank to improve your quality of life. There is little use for the other demon types in PvE. Let's look at gameplay single target with the core toolset. Keep Immolate rolling at all times, and make sure your Conflagrate charges never cap. Incinerate as you wait for shards, and then spend them on Chaos Bolt. There is no rush to immediately use Chaos Bolt or Conflagrate, so there is a small amount of resource management. Shard generation from Immolate is random, so try to avoid being capped whenever possible, as you could be losing procs. Because it doesn't matter where in the recharge window you use Conflagrate, you can either use it immediately or to make up the current difference to cast Chaos Bolt. Because Conflagrate gives shards on demand, the most Chaos Bolts you can cast in a row is 3 without procs from Immolate. However, given the 2 shard cost and the charge cooldown, the most common way to do this is to cap shards to get the third cast. So start with 5 shards, cast 2 Chaos Bolts, Conflagrate, Chaos Bolt. Or if you have 4 shards and 2 charges, use Conflagrate after the first two Chaos Bolts. Ok, so on the way to AoE, we first need to stop by 2 target cleave, because Destruction's signature ability is Havoc. It mirrors all single target abilities onto another target for 8 seconds. It is no longer limited by quantity of casts, and you should take the opportunity to spread Immolate and Chaos Bolt while Havoc is active. Conflagrate will deal damage to both targets, but only generates the one shard. For AoE, you have Reign of Fire. It costs 3 shards, and is a free aiming damage over time. You simply throw it over whatever you want AoE, and hope they both stay alive and inside the effect for the whole duration. Because Reign costs 3 shards, without external procs, the most you can cast is 2. You will again need to start with 5 shards, and cast Reign, Conflagrate, Reign. The damage stacks, so there is no problem overlapping them. And whilst having your primary AoE as a dot is a little ineffective, it does mean you can be doing other things at the same time. As Immolate is the primary source of shards, and your only AoE is a shard spender, you want to keep Immolate rolling on a reasonable number of targets. And you can of course use Havoc to do this faster. And as your shard generation picks up, you'll spend the majority of your time casting rain. Ok, let's have a look at the rest of the toolset and the spellbook. For cooldowns, Summon Doomguard is a ranged single target, and Summon Infernal is a melee AoE. They both cost a shard to summon and last 25 seconds with a shared 3 minute cooldown. You have to choose which you will use, but it will usually be the Doomguard, except when you have the artifact main trait Lord of Flame, which summons additional Infernals that currently out damage the Doomguard single target. Those are on a 10 minute cooldown, so usually you will only get one round per boss. The artifact weapon comes with the ability Dimensional Rift. It has three charges that randomly creates one of three rift types that shoot the target. They can all be used at the same time, so it can be held without issue. You only need to prevent the charges capping. As for defensives, Unending Resolve is a standard ability. It reduces all damage taken and gives immunity to interrupts and silences. Soul Leech is a shield on both you and your pet that is generated by single target damage. And for utility, Soul Stone is a combat res that can be placed on a target before they die. Health stones are basically conjured health potions, and Soul Well is a way to distribute said health stones. 
Drain Life deals damage to the target and heals you. It's channeled with low damage, so you really don't want to be using it if you don't have to. Ritual of Summoning is the standard taxi service on a 2 minute cooldown. Demonic Gateway creates portals at two locations that you and your raid can use to quickly move between. Fear is a disorientate crowd control that breaks pretty much instantly on any damage. Banish is crowd control on demons and elementals, making them immune to damage until you recast Banish. Enslaved Demon is a gimmick as it replaces your pet. The expansion is demon focused, but it's highly unlikely you'll be using this for anything practical. Eye of Killrog is another gimmick, Unending Breath is underwater breathing and swim speed, and Health Funnel heals your pet at the cost of your own health. As for stats, the primary stat is Intellect. The goal then is Haste, as it reduces cast times, the global cooldown, and increases the tick rate of Immolate. Crit increases the chance of gaining shards from Immolate, and increases the damage of Chaos Bolt, and also Conflagrate with the trait. After that, the Mastery is basically a kind of RNG versatility, but with a much wider range. And then the real versatility in last place. Okay, let's move on to Talents. Tier 15. Backdraft makes Conflagrate reduce the cast time of Incinerate and Chaos Bolt for a short time. This can be used to quickly dump Chaos Bolts, but because the cast time reduction is locked in once you start casting, when you only have a few shards, you can chain several Incinerates before finally casting Chaos Bolt right at the end of the buff. Roaring Blaze makes Conflagrate increase the remaining damage of Immolate. This means you would always follow Immolate with Conflagrate. However, this damage stacks, which makes it very strong for sustained DPS, especially if you can spread it with Havoc. The simplest way to manage this is to use both Conflagrates together after casting Immolate. And doing this with a moderate amount of haste, both charges will line up with the next Immolate. With the dot extension mechanic, it's possible to further extend Immolate, and with more than 6 seconds left, you can stack it a third time. Shadow Burn is no longer in Execute, but it deals instant damage and generates 2 shards if the target dies shortly after. And importantly, when combined with Havoc, it debuffs both targets, so you gain shards from both of them when they die. It also gives you something to cast while moving, a rare thing for destruction. Tier 30. Reverse Entropy reduces the cast times of Chaos Bolt and Reign of Fire, and they now return mana. The cast time reduction by itself is useful, and the regen means you can ignore mana completely. Removing life tap from your rotation frees up more time to cast other things. Cataclysm is an AoE cooldown that also immolates all targets. Whilst the damage is dealt instantly, it's ground based with a long cast time, so you'll need to know where things will be ahead of time. It's quite a strong AoE cooldown, and the increased shard generation means you can cast more Reign of Fire. Mana tap increases your damage at the cost of mana and time. Given that Reverse Entropy removes the global spent on life tap, this adds those back, along with more lost maintaining this buff. You can extend it pre-pull, so benefiting on shorter fights. Tier 45. Demon Skin increases the recharge rate and the size of the shield from Soul Leech. Mortal Coil is a renamed Death Coil, and attaches a heal onto a short incapacitate. Shadow Fury is an AoE stun, but has a cast time of 1.5 seconds. Tier 60. Eradication is a debuff left by Chaos Bolt that increases all damage done to the target. The idea is to maintain the buff for as long as possible, so it synergizes primarily with Roaring Blaze, and is also mirrored with Havoc. Fire and Brimstone turns your Incinerate into a permanent AoE, but this is more sustain than burst, because Incinerate is still a filler spell. On any short term AoE, you'd be using Cataclysm and its subsequent shards on Reign of Fire which is not leaving much time to cast Incinerate, and with Havoc hitting two targets, there really isn't the need for this on standard cleave fights. So it's really only if you're dealing with constant AoE, and it synergizes with Backdraft. Soul Harvest increases all damage done by you and your pets, including the Rifts, with time increased by 2 seconds for every target affected with Immolate before it was cast. It's just a standard 2 minute DPS cooldown really. Tier 75. Demonic Circle is a two-stage teleport. You place it with the button once, and then press that same button again to port back to that location. It used to be two buttons, so you could easily move the circle, but for some nonsensical reason they've combined them and now force you to use the cancel aura macro in yellow that is on the screen. Burning Rush is a toggle sprint that drains health. It used to be absorbed by your shield, but it now goes directly to your health, meaning if you are running away from ray damage, you will still take some of it by proxy. 
Dark Pact is a shield allowing you to take a fairly large hit as it's combined with Soul Leech and uses your pet's current health. But because the pet is an imp, it has lower health than the other two specs. It's a safe choice, but leaves you very immobile. Tier 90, Grimoire of Supremacy, turns your Doomguard and Infernal into permanent pets. Doomguard comes with a channeled snare that stops it from doing anything else, so make sure that's turned off. The Infernal comes with constant AoE and two threat abilities that need to be turned off in a group. However, this talent gives up your 3 minute cooldown, which really hurts, and it attaches Lord of Flames onto your pet Infernal's command demon ability, Meteor Strike. So if you were using the Doomguard, you'd first have to summon in the Infernal like a regular pet, and then wait for it to walk over to the target before finally Meteor Striking. Grimoire of Service is a DPS cooldown that summons another demon dealing increased damage. You will of course be taking the Imp, so this is a single target DPS cooldown. It lasts 25 seconds and synergizes with Soul Harvest. Grimoire of Sacrifice kills your pet to give you a buff that lasts one hour. It sometimes makes your spells deal shadow damage in an AoE around the target, off of any target hit. Similar in role to the Supremacy Infernal, but you get to keep the cooldown. Tier 100, Wreak Havoc, makes Havoc last 20 seconds and removes the cooldown. This is a great talent for dealing with any situation involving a small number of targets. You can now mirror all of your single target damage with ease. This talent synergizes with everything single target and will be your pick for fights with more than one target and less than constant AoE. Channel Demon Fire randomly throws some firebolts at immolated targets. The cooldown and channel time are reduced by haste. It has no impact on resources, so single target, you use Demon Fire in place of Incinerate. However, the quantity of bolts are fixed and are not spread by havoc, and also don't increase with more targets. So, unlike the quantity of incinerates that increase with either havoc or fire and brimstone, so this rapidly, or pretty much immediately, becomes worse than incinerate multi target. Soul Conduit gives a chance to refund every shard used, and rolls separately from the weapon trait Soul Snatcher. Conduit simply increases the total quantity of spenders. Nothing competes with Wreak Havoc in the several target group, but this is your only option for sustained AoE as this results in more Reign of Fire. As for single target, this is directly competing against Demon Fire, and therefore by proxy, the strength of Chaos Bolt. As for build single target, they'll look something like Roaring Blaze, Reverse Entropy, Eradication, Grimoire of Service, and probably Soul Conduit, but it could have been Demon Fire. Tier 45 will always be Demon Skin, and 75 will depend on your requirements. Add in a few more targets, and the build is exactly the same, but you'd naturally switch to Wreak Havoc. Switching into full AoE, you'll be looking at Shadow Burn, Cataclysm, and Soul Conduit. Whether it's sustained or burst will determine if you keep service or take sacrifice. And also, between Fire and Brimstone, or Soul Harvest. Okay, that covers all the talents. Let's have a look at the weapon. Here are the main traits. Lord of Flames adds more Infernals to summon Infernal every 10 minutes. Conflagration of Chaos has a chance the following Conflagrate will use the same mechanics as Chaos Bolt. Dimension Ripper gives Incinerate a chance to gain a charge of Rift. And here are the useful traits. It's more shards and damage from Immolate, and more damage on Chaos Bolt and the chance to refund a shard. That role is separate to Conduit, so you can return both shards. And here are the rest. The weapon is not a talent system, it's simply more leveling. You will find different flavoured relics that add a rank to a trait and increase your weapon's item level. The best relic to take is simply the highest item level. Because it takes time to unlock, the initial route is kind of important. On destruction, the useful traits are clear to see, but are spread and gated across all sides. So first off, head straight to Burning Hunger through Eternal Struggle. We now have access to two single point traits, take Lord of Flames, and you could take Impish Incineration as you're there. As for the next section, I am wary of immediately advising Residual Flames, as that relies on Roaring Blaze, and you can quite easily find it nerfed and be left out of position. So the safest option is to head down to Soul Snatcher and Chaotic Instability, going through Master of Disaster and Demonic Durability, and pick up Dimension Ripper as you're there. And it's now you'd be going up the Conflagration of Chaos. Then finishing the route with Fire in the Flames, Fire from the Sky, and finally ending with Planeswalker. And that concludes both the weapon and the first Destruction Warlock Guide in Legion. If you found it helpful, please like the video as that will help others find it.
If you wanted more detailed information, I'll be taking a closer look at different mechanics in the future, as well as other specs and classes. Best of luck in Legion, and thanks for watching.